Billy, your first goal for Rovers was at Blanford Park, wasn't it? I think the show yeah. came off in, in the celebration. Was that premeditated, that celebration, or was it a bit of sort of frustration <laughs> released from within you? No, not at all. It was not planned, but um, I think it was the, my third appearance and I'd not scored, so um, I wanted to get off the mark and I was obviously going to sh- show some respect to Scunthorpe fans, but a lot of them was giving me stick and it wound me up a little bit and I think I'd have dealt with it better nowadays with the experience and the more mature that I am, but um, I'd just scored a goal for, for the football club I was playing for and it meant a lot to me and um, the shirt came off because there was a few things said about me and sung about me, but um, you know I think a lot of people have forgiven me for that. And uh, at the end of the day, I was playing for Doncaster and trying to score goals for them, and it, it, like I say, it meant a lot to me and um, the opportunity that Doncaster gave me. And I, w- I wanted to repay them with goals, and obviously that got me off the mark, which was was a good thing for me. And, well, I got to play straight down the middle uh, with Cops one side and providing the crosses and the assists and. Like Cop says, James Hayter was very underrated for what he did for the club um, and for the team. He was always our out ball if we couldn't get the ball into myself or into Cops. We had midfielders who could pick, you know, diagonals out and Hayter would always get his head or his body in, get hold of the ball or flip things onto me. And I did. I liked playing with, with Hayter as well. And he chipped in with the goals as well as Cops. And obviously, I had the job to try and get the goals, which it was a well balanced um, team formation. and a set of lads who, who wanted to do well for each other. Cops, we mentioned earlier on about your delivery into the box as a wide man and maybe not particularly aiming for a man, but just aiming for an area. Did you have confidence whenever you put the ball in the box, Billy would be there or thereabouts and getting on the end of it? Yeah, I think my role changed um, throughout my time there with Sean. So I think I played in a three in midfield, which I didn't like. Um, and I had to go see Sean and say, look, like that, that isn't me. Like I'm not, I'm not one of them players. I think I had to sort of wait for my turn to, to play sort of further up. And then I got that opportunity. And I think from my perspective, it's always, I've always enjoyed sort of creating opportunities. I've never been that, that player that, hence the reason why I've never scored that many goals. Like I've never been that player that gets as much satisfaction out as, as Billy does from scoring a goal. I, I almost get it from, from creating and assisting and just being part of a team that plays really, really good football. Um, and I have been my whole sort of career, but my whole life since I started playing football. So to have somebody to finish their moves off to to put the ball in the back of the net is arguably one of the hardest things to do. Um, it doesn't matter who it is. From my perspective, if I'm putting the balls into areas, as long as you know that somebody's going to be there. But... It's just Billy, I don't know, He's obviously we're talking about him, but it's just his enthusiasm. I say it all the time to people that ask me what sort of qualities he has. And I think, obviously, I've played with Alan Shearer as well. And it's very similar, you know, when you have that sort of appetite and that desire to score goals, um, it sets you apart from the rest. You know, it doesn't matter how good you are technically to an extent. You need that desire to every time you go on a pitch, score a goal. And I think that's what he brought and that's what he's, he's had. Uh, hence the reason why he scored so many goals. I think there was a couple of times that season as well when Soccer AM used to do the, the celebration uh, competitions at the end of it. I remember one that you did, was it QPR with a corner flag and had the team sort of lined up behind you as well. Was that something when you're on such a good vein of, of goal scoring form that you'd look out for and, and look to do every week? Yeah, I think that was something to do with the amazing state-of-the-art gym that we had in... Uh, <laughs> In the port cabin. Um, no, we used to have a, a good lift in there after training. <laughs> Try and lift as much as we can. And just remember bending over and leaning on someone's back. I think it was yours, Cops, and doing the, the um, celebration. That's what I mean. It was enjoyable. Just, you know, scoring goals was enjoyable. But for your teammates to to be as happy as you are as well, it, it was. It was a great, great time. And again, my family, I had quite a lot of family, probably more family had uh, come to watch me at Doncaster than any other club that I've been at. So it was, um, like like Cobb says, a lot to do with John Ryan at the time. He made it um, possible and I was just thankful for the opportunity and met a lot of great people at Doncaster and it seemed to fit me well. I went to John Ryan's house and he said, look, I want to get it over the line as quickly as possible and I was the same. And Obviously, there was things to be sorted out between two clubs, but I couldn't wait to get back going and going a little bit fitter because I, I wasn't at the fittest when I went on loan and... Um, 
it, it was it was good that it happened because, like I said, I had another good season and um, enjoyed my time. Obviously, every game I played, I loved every minute of it. Was it a big decision back then to move away from Sheffield United permanently again? Obviously, the second time that had happened in your career to then go for it at a championship club. Was it a big decision? Um, it was a big decision, but obviously I don't regret it and I couldn't wait to go this time. Um, you know, I think people like belief in me at Sheffield United and Doncaster was showing a lot of belief, which is important for me. And um, yeah, I'd had such a good time on loan. I couldn't wait to get back. And like I say, the facilities were great as well. So, uh, you know, I need to get back in, in, in them facilities to um, improve as a, as a player. Were there other options back then? I'm assuming the goals you scored in the Championship led to a fair bit of interest from other clubs. Did it ever come close to, to going elsewhere or was it always Rovers in the back of your mind you wanted to go to? No, there was other clubs, yeah. But that's, again, I was, um, I was happy to sign for Doncaster. I thought it was the right, right place for me. They showed um, faith in me. I wanted to repay that and, and go and score goals for them again because I, I felt that, you know, we talked about it getting in the playoffs and I felt that we, we could do that and um, you know we came close didn't quite get there but again I don't regret ever joining Doncaster it was brilliant for me and a great club and got me to where I am now like I said How long was that fat lad from Sheffield comment before the goal against Sheffield United then was that in the week leading up to it? Yeah it was well I think we got beat the week before we played Sheffield United I'm sure it was um, and obviously then uh, Mud, the kit man, um, one of the best kit mans I've had in my career. Um, he laid it out on my um, place before the game and it just made me laugh. And he was like, look, you don't have to. I just thought you'd find it funny. I was like, no, it's brilliant. And uh, it obviously became a really good timing as well because it was against Sheffield and I didn't really want to celebrate against them. So I just remember running off, coming back to towards the halfway line and pulling the shirt up and having a laugh about it. And yeah, Sean O'Driscoll took it well and it sort of killed me from that day, really. <laughs> <laughs> I've been the fat lad from Sheffield ever since. Obviously, a few months after that goal against them at the keep mode, you scored at Bramall Lane as well. And, and there was a little bit of a celebration there in front of the Rovers fans. Was that ever in your mind not to do that at Bramall Lane? I'm, I'm assuming you had plenty of family there on that occasion. Yeah, it was one of my favourite games for Doncaster. That um, I love that kit for some reason as well. The, the sky blue all sky blue kit. Um, another great photo I've got of me and Cops. Uh, I don't know who's got more wrinkles on the red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it was a I great. Ten game. years older than you. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was that was that was one of the one of the issues with why we didn't get in the playoffs. We was two one up with seconds to go and conceded. Rob Coslow, he, he's know, yeah. I think he's the only goal he ever scored in his career. Um, funniest man in football, but. Couldn't finish his dinner and he somehow scored against us to get a two-all draw. Um, but yeah, to get two goals and at, at Bramall Lane was an amazing feeling. And it was at the Donny end as well, which I had no doubt I was going to celebrate. It was great to see all them fans, you know, in, in the away end. And it's a brilliant place to play football as well. It was, it was a good good day for us. And but like I said, disappointing result in the end. Obviously, the Doncaster has been torn apart a little bit with, with what have happened and players had left and we wasn't as strong as we was and everyone's got ambitions and um, I had a great opportunity to go and play Premier League football with Southampton or, or Leicester I could have could have gone there I chose Southampton obviously because of the manager um, um, he was a big part of me going there uh, when I went there I was nowhere near as fit as I should have been which let me down in the first you know six or seven weeks which um but once I got fit, I got going and managed to score goals. And uh, again, the politics the season after came into play and saw me saw me leave Southampton. Which then you start to think, should I just say that Doncaster and you know I'd have played every week? And but again, I don't regret it. It was a good opportunity for me, and it was Doncaster that gave me the opportunity and the platform to to showcase what I could do to, to get that move. So not just. For the the, the bad, the tough times that we're having at Doncaster, I owe them a lot for the opportunity, and obviously that's the reason why, I, you know, I got that opportunity in the championship to to score goals, and it got me a move to to another club, which I think it helped just before Christmas with with the results that we had against, you know, I think Southampton was top, and 
I think Leicester the week before, I think Cops put one in and managed to not quite an overhead kick, a bit more of a scissor <laughs> kick past Michael and that was 1-0 and the week after was 1-0 against Southampton and um, yeah, it was, it, I was sad to leave but it was a great opportunity for me to, to, to go to Southampton and a fresh start for, for obviously the tough times that I'd had and I thought it was a right, right move at the time. Thank <laughs> you.